our voices inside and outside to worship Him.
do something remarkable. to lift our voices in one minute and thank God for his faithfulness upon this ministry. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus, we thank you. No man can do this except God. Can you thank you in one minute for the miracle, for the testimony, the transformation, you are good and your mercy is forever Hallelujah That's our testimony That he is good and his mercy is forever Hallelujah Just the voices
Acts chapter 3. Blessed be the name of the Lord. On my way back home, I was just thinking all through the journey. Um, I was recounting on God's faithfulness. Please pay attention, inside and outside. And um, I was just thinking through what the Lord had put in my heart to share with us tonight. Your dominion in life is a summation of your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. I've said this again and again and I want us to please pay attention. Every gate can be opened if you have the key, not if you want it opened. Gates only open when you have the keys. Desire is not enough to bring you to the place of destiny and breakthrough. And so, as we keep coming week after week, I want you to realize that there is a transformation that is happening. And that transformation is happening by the power of the Word of God. The Word of God not only gives you knowledge, it translates you to become what He's saying. And it empowers you to demonstrate the reality of what you claim to know. Any truth that you have and you know that cannot be demonstrated is not yet a revelation in your life. Hallelujah. And so I want to challenge us that our passion in this place, we must keep our passions high, even as we seek to press. To know Him and to understand His ways. I give you a guarantee. The Bible says they are life to them, those who find them. Not everybody will find them. They are not life to Christians, to those who find them. And health to their flesh. Ah, Kenny, it's good to see. Hallelujah. So I want to share with us a few things that will challenge us. Because it's my desire that the least of us will be as great as David. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowledge is like an atmosphere. It commands possibilities in your life. It's not about trying. It's either it is there Hallelujah. Are you blessed already? So make sure that you are learning constructively. The goal is not just to carry out a service. You know that we have no business with religion here. The goal is to empower you. Praise the Lord. Come promise. Look at this. Please bring your what you are holding. Come. Watch this everyone. What is he holding? What is he holding? You are holding a book. You are aware you are holding a book. If I try to convince you that you are not holding anything, will you agree? Is it an issue of prayer? You are, if this is called reality. You are holding on to something that has become a conviction. Please listen to me. This is not something you are trying to believe. This is not something that is subject to debate or the opinions of men. See, the degree to which your, you become stable in the kingdom, um, your stability is proportionate to the depth of your conviction. Whenever you are not convinced about the reality, it's easy for you to drift. Either when it does not yet produce results, or when there seem to be conflicting opinions. The apostle said, but I know who I have believed. I wasn't just told about it. I know. He says, and I am persuaded. Unshakable. Immovable. That revelation has become a conviction for me. And I stand upon it. This is what God is doing to us. Bringing us to a point where we are convicted. That you know that you are holding something. You are holding something. 
that you can take to the world and no devil no culture no system no limitation no gate can stop you it's not just a prophecy it's a resultant effect of paying attention there are some things when you hold on to you have entered your sabbath it's not if it is when it will come is god speaking to us now thank you acts chapter 3 the bible talks to us about the activities of the early church please pay attention jesus had resurrected the bible tells us in acts chapter 1 how that he was with them for a period of 40 days teaching them on the matters of the kingdom he was helping them to be grounded in truth are we together and after the holy ghost had come in acts chapter 3 the bible says in the hour of prayer they were going to pray and then they saw a man he was begging for arms he had been there at the beautiful and the Bible says this time around when Peter and John came Peter looked at him and he made a very interesting statement in verse 6 chapter 3 of Acts verse 6 and Peter said silver and gold have I none he says but what such as I have the question is at what point did he know he had it because there was a time he did not have it is that true at what point what was the evidence that what happens to a man to know you've had something are you getting what i'm saying now he said such as i have i give i have something and i'm not only it's not just i am aware of it and it can be dispensed i have it i know that i have it I understand the dynamics of its operation and I can release it to you. He said, such as I have, I give. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Let's see what happened the next verse. Watch what happened. He said, when he said that the man was still sitting, he didn't stand up. He was still sitting. And the Bible says, his sitting was not going to sway Peter. For Peter to say, I'm not sure again. Peter said, I know I have it. Whether you don't respond, it doesn't change my persuasion. Such as I have, you don't know the activities that sponsor my conviction. Your refusing to act is too small to shake me. And he held his hands. Because he knew he had something. And he was insisting, I have something. And when I speak to you, there should be an effect. And if there is no effect, I insist. He said, such as I have, many of us seeing that man seated would have quietly moved away for the shame. That is lack of conviction. You, you think you have something. Now a man stands before you and challenges your conviction. And at once you chicken out. But Peter said, no way, I know I have it. You are just meeting me. You don't know who else I have met. You don't know the 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 revelations that support my audacity i know i have something and the man was just looking many people have told me to try standing up and peter said you don't know me and the bible says he held his hand he knew he had something that revelation persuaded him enough he stood before that challenge and would not be embarrassed because he knew it must work is god speaking to us he says, and he took him by the hand and what? And lifted him. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength to validate that he had something to give. Listen, Peter would have looked at him and said, Well, John, you too, you saw. I tried. We did exactly what Jesus said. Oh God, please don't be embarrassed. After all, we didn't collect money. And he would have gone back. That would not change the fact that he had something. But it was not released. Peter said, such as I have, I'm not only aware, I understand that it is supposed to be dispensed. And I refuse to allow what I am seeing to influence my convictions. He says, but I know whom I believe. And I am persuaded. Not confused, persuaded. The problem with the church is lack of persuasion. 
the grounds upon which our audacity is standing upon is fragile we don't take time to establish conviction upon kingdom realities we're in a hurry to get rema we're in a hurry to get revelation we're in a hurry to get knowledge let me tell you something the world is ruled by men of conviction dead or alive you don't respect a man because you believe in him you respect a man because of consistency of conviction when a man becomes unbending he commands your respect at once that's why we cannot pretend that Boko Haram is a force to reckon with they will be defeated but their convictions are strong strong unto death are you getting what I'm saying the only reason the only reason why faith is an issue in the church is because our convictions are small hallelujah and so when we sit down like this as the word of God comes it gives us understanding it not only tells you what you have it explains to you the dynamics of it so that you get to a realm of persuasion where nothing can shake you say amen listen pay attention to what i'm saying because life will challenge it at any level ask any leader life will challenge your convictions from head to toe and the gates will only open when you prove that you merit it opening not everything in the kingdom is a gift there are things that are rewards rewards for consistency rewards for persuasion hallelujah are we together when the holy spirit comes please listen when the holy spirit comes upon a believer at new birth i want you to know that the coming of the Holy Spirit in every one believer that gives his life to Christ introduces the presence of God to that man's life. A presentation of the presence of the Father. The Bible tells us again and again. Is that true? So when the Holy Spirit comes, listen, comes to live in you, he represents the presence of God. And with him, Kabbalah Kataya, is a measure of God's ability at what in you everybody say God's ability say one more time God's ability say God's energy say God's capacity when the Holy Spirit dwells in a man his presence comes with a measure of God's ability at work in that man now whether or not you know it whether or not you use it is a different thing but that is the truth because scripture cannot be broken are we together now so when the holy spirit comes he comes with a measure of god's ability this is very interesting because the kingdom was designed never to function absolutely by the strength of man listen the changes that humanity requires cannot be affected just by the, the strength of man it cannot just be affected by intellect it cannot just be affected by kindness and charity it takes more than that it takes an ability that is supernatural it takes the ability of God to bring transformation not just preaching do you know what it means to speak to a man and just by speaking make that man change his ideology an ideology that he has hold or he held to for decades and then in one meeting you speak and he's persuaded enough it's called utterance not oratory oratory is the ability to speak well you learn that in school utterance is the capacity to communicate spiritual reality on the strength of God's ability such that the listener is able to enter into your experience that is utterance it's not oratory what we have in church is oratory but we need utterance it's a gate that gives you access to the ability of the spirit to persuade men such that they subscribe to the value system of the kingdom are we together 
So the ability of the Holy Spirit that brings in that divine life. Many Christians jump and about having the divine life. But we do not see the evidence of that divine life. That divine life that dwells within you. And it comes with a measure of the ability of the Spirit. If you do not recognize that there is an ability of the Spirit that is at work in you. You will rob yourself of the capacity to function like God. God gave us His ability so that we can produce His results. Listen, listen. Only God's kind of result can bring change and impact in our world. Only God's kind of result can bring blessings. Only God's kind of result can bring lifting. Only God's kind of result can bring transformation. If you're with me, say Amen. God's ability. That's what we call power. That's what we call the anointing. The anointing is not oil. The anointing is God's energy. His very ability. We define power in physics as what? Work done per unit time. Energy expanded. That's exactly the definition of the ability of God. His capacity. When God wants to do anything, He depends on His ability. And so when He sends you as His ambassador, He gives you His ability. God's ability. Say it again. God's ability. One definition of frustration is to try to achieve God's kind of result with your ability. You will see how crippled you look in life. Say after me, I have the ability of God. How many people have gone to seek people out of zeal and kindness? You are sick, Sam. In the name of Jesus, be healed. By their ability, they want to see God's result. But they are conscious of their ability. No. It is not given to man. Please hear me. It is not given to man to produce God's result with his ability. How many pastors and churches are frustrated because they are trying to get growth. They are trying to get this and, and all kinds of teachings. It takes the ability of God. Shout it God's ability. Listen, listen. I'm telling you this. Don't just allow the scientific world fool you. The realm of the spirit controls the physical realm. It was James the Apostle that told us, For as the body without the spirit, there must be a spirit component to everything for it to work. I don't care what it is. If there is no spirit component, it is death. There must be a spirit component to business. There must be a spirit component to your academics. There must be a spirit component to marriage. I love you, I love you is not enough. There must be a spirit component. There must be a spirit component to anything that we do. The problem is, many times we ignore the spiritual side because we think it is not necessary. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. How helpless a man is, brothers and sisters. How helpless in the face of this cruel life. There are gates on every mountain. There are giants on every mountain. It doesn't take stories to move them. It takes the ability. There are devils standing on the gates of your finances. It takes the ability of God. Why do we need the ability of God? It is power to effect changes. Listen, change can never occur until the power of God is present in a place. Any kind of change. The ability to effect change from healings to miracles to soul winning to transformation. It is entirely dependent on the ability of God. There are so many people who try to do evangelism sincerely from their heart. But there is no ability. How many times have we stood in the face of situations that honestly demand the touch of God? But we know that we are short of God's ability. God gave you His ability so that you can fully produce change. The Bible says in John chapter 15, it says, Herein is my Father glorified when you bear much fruit. So then shall ye be my disciples. 
God wants us to bear fruit, but it takes an ability. An ability higher and greater than yourself. Are you getting what I'm saying? The second reason why we need the ability of God is to be able to produce supernatural results. Please write it down. Supernatural results. If your results are natural, the world does not have space for you. The 21st century does not have space for natural results. The minimum standard in our world today is a supernatural. It takes an ability of God for a mortal man to produce results out of proportion. Hmm. The Bible says they were astonished when they saw Jesus Christ and they saw the kinds of results that he was producing. Let me tell you something. Don't ever allow anybody to preach you into thinking results do not matter. In the school of greatness, only God sees the heart. Men can only see the outward appearance. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't ever let anyone fool you. It's God that can see the heart. You can die with your good intentions. If you want to influence men, you must let your light shine. Not let your light glow. It must shine for men to see, not angels. God wants them to see it. It is in the seeing that they become persuaded. Therefore, permit your light to so shine before men that they may see your good works and as a result, glorify your Father. John 17 verse 1, Jesus was speaking. He said, now the hour has come. He was speaking to the Lord. He said, glorify now thy Son to the end that thy Son will bring you glory. So the only way God is glorified is when we are glorified. Our glorification is a means to an end, not an end in itself. It gives God the opportunity because no man can praise himself. You need another to praise you. It's against the law of greatness for you to praise yourself. When you praise yourself, it's called arrogance. When another man praises you, it's called honor. Hallelujah. So we need the ability of God to produce changes. There are people here who are sick. It doesn't take stories. We can shout and jump around and just make a lot of noise. When they tell your dad in the office or your mom, we are going to fire you, brothers and sisters, it takes the ability of the spirit to change it. When the landlord tells you tomorrow, if you cannot bring your money, you are out. It takes what? The ability of God. The problem is this. We have ignored the ability of God in the church. We believe in God. But we have ignored his ability. That anointing. That agency of the spirit that empowers men to produce change. And to produce results. This ministry by the grace of God is a testimony of God's ability. The ability of God working through men. And I want that to become your testimony from tonight. That tonight you will give up on just trying to get things happen by your strength. When you depend on God's ability, you will see results that are out of proportion. Praise the Lord. Tonight is a very simple teaching. Until the ability that is within a believer is released, he can never be a blessing to his generation. I want you to know this. Until the ability that is resident within a believer is released, not acquired, not gotten. Your being anointed does not make any meaning to your generation until that anointing is released. The release of that ability is what brings about blessings. The Bible says no man lights a lamp and puts it under a bush. No man does that. But you, the purpose of lighting it is so that it can give illumination and direction. So until the ability or the anointing is released, the believer can never be a blessing. You only become a blessing when you allow the measure of God's ability in you to find expression in your physical world. 
the bible says and the word became flesh and did what it now dwelt among men and they beheld the glory they could never behold the glory for as long as it was in the realm of the spirit but when it became flesh Shadrach, it's good to see you I'm happy seeing my people praise the lord the word became flesh the anointing that god has given you when it translates into wisdom that men can relate with when it translates into creativity that men can relate with when it translates into dunamis power the capacity to produce change here and now then christ is glorified otherwise we'll keep talking a lot of stories that which is resident within you must find expression for christ to be glorified are we together now now the problem with many of us seated here is not that we are not anointed it's not that the hand of god is not upon our lives but that inability to understand the dynamics of expressing the ability of god is what has crippled us and so we stand before mountains we can walk over and yet we cry before them the reason is because we have not come to a point where we realize that the ability of god is at work in us moses listen moses stood before the red sea god did not add anything to him right there there was the ability to cross over but he was afraid when he went back god just said why are you coming to me i gave you a rod the word is in your mouth tell the people to move forward he went back and did what he would have done in the first place do you know that many times when you go to god most of the things you get from him is comfort because actually you have the ability to do what you do but just because our psychology is built around just hearing something from god and so god said it is well now go and then you get up and go you would have done that right away are you getting what i'm saying now your going and that reception of comfort was just to encourage you but all the while the ability was within you when he appeared to gideon in the book of judges chapter 6 when he looked at him what did he call him all oh, down mighty man of failure but gideon was hiding there was no special impartation service he just said gideon what is going on gideon said god you too you know what is going is happening and he began to tell him how that he was going to go and defeat the Midianites. There is an ability within me. I'll never forget the first time God told me this thing. Listen, it's not enough to know God is mighty. This was a song that gave me that revelation. You know this song, Lord you reign forever. Lord you reign forever. I worship you. Years ago I was singing this song. I worship you. This was the part that changed me. You reign you reign you reign you reign that's you talking to the lord and i had it very clearly like a man singing back to me this was what i had you reign cause i reign you reign cause i reign you reign this is what god is telling me back he's responding to my worship and say, son, it's not enough to know I reign. There's no confusion about that. The trouble is here on earth. So reign because I reign. Now that you are aware, I've told you you are like me. I expect a legislation that is consistent with what is happening in heaven. That way the kingdom comes. It's not enough to say, Lord, I know you are reigning. What is happening to us here? We are dying. Keep reigning. Let's keep dying. No, no. It says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done where? In the earth, not in heaven. There is no confusion about order in heaven. The confusion is here. So he says, rain. And it gave me an understanding. Not just these things, people jump around. I'm a king, I'm a king, and one die like a fool. You jump based on knowledge and revelation. See, you can have something. And you can take it anywhere believe me i know what i'm saying a man can have something and you can hold on to it and run with it that's what god is speaking to us he reigns so you reign he reigns so you reign so he expects you to legislate Listen, listen, 
a man called Saint Patrick. Have you heard about Saint Patrick? A man called Saint Patrick, the son of the king, had died for six months. How many months? Six months. They had buried him, and he was he was bringing a lot of catastrophe. And that man called Saint Patrick walked straight to the grave and signed his name on it, Saint Patrick, and they opened it and dug out a human being alive. It's in history. Men who knew they had something not independent of God. Listen, with God, all things are possible. I've demonstrated it for you here. Come, promise. Can I use you again? With promise, all things are possible. Without Him, some things are no longer possible. But with Him, the word with God here means in partnership. In partnership. That's why we call it koinonia. In partnership, there is an ability. You and God constitute an unbeatable team. Have you watched wrestling? How they can beat somebody as if they are passing him through a meat machine. And then, on the other side, his colleague is there, bouncing and saying, touch me. So that you, you, you are weak, but we are a tag team. Is that true? If you win, we share the money together. If you lose, we lose together. It's a partnership. And so the Holy Ghost is standing and telling you, look, look, you have been going around this mountain. Why don't you come into partnership with me? There is an ability within you. Listen, listen. There is an ability. It's called Enegas. The Greek word is Enegas. It says, now unto him, Philippians 3, uh, uh, 20. Unto him who is able, he has an ability to do exceedingly abundantly, far above all we ask or think, not according to his might, according to the power that works not in heaven, in you, in you, the possibilities in your life are dependent on activating the anointing and the ability of the spirit within you. And so like the wrestling, someone lifts his hands and have you seen the way people touch the other? I mean they almost have no strength and they touch somebody else and he jumps in and plays nonsense with the one who has been beating his colleague and wins and then he holds the guy who is a team together and they lift the belt together he doesn't lift the belt and say you when you are tired stand up and walk home he lifts him and says we won listen I'm bringing you into a revelation that your victory starts from the standpoint a consciousness that with you and the Holy Ghost never do anything outside of the Holy Ghost you will fail it's not a prophecy it was designed to happen that way Master we have toiled all night but in partnership with your word let's go back and watch a miracle are you getting what I'm saying now? Prophet Elijah, outside of the Holy Spirit, he could not say anything. He said, look, guys, you want prophecy from me. I can't move. My human ability cannot do anything. But play me in this spell. And the moment they began to play, when the Holy Ghost came upon him, he said, now I have something to say. Fill these dishes with water. You may not see wind. You may not see rain. Yet, the valley shall be filled with water. Listen, that is not yet possible in your life does not mean it is not possible. It's amazing how a challenge can be killing you and somebody will come and pass it as if it does not exist. There is an ability that sponsors that audacity. And I want you to know that if you are in Christ, that ability is within you. There is an ability. I walk conscious of this. Every time I go to minister, I walk conscious of this. And the Lord walking with them and the Holy Spirit working not just in Joshua Selman but with Joshua Selman there is a partnership it's a koinonia we are inseparable it's like the, a false covenant where I am foolish I trust his wisdom where I am confused there is strength when I stand before a sick body I know I am very aware I'm intelligent enough to know that you cannot Squeeze out cancer from somebody and it disappears at once. I'm smart enough to know that that cancer is matter. It has weight. It can occupy space. But then when his ability comes, hmm. 
when his ability comes that's when the difference see listen don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you this is your recipe this is your key to unstoppable unstoppable exploits in the kingdom the ability of the spirit thank you let's take a few things i want us to pray let's take down a few things You must allow the measure of God's anointing within you to find expression and produce testimonies in the lives of people. Just two or three things I'll say again and then we'll pray. God's ability in a man can grow and it can increase. The ability of God that is resident within a man can grow. Every living thing grows. God's ability is alive and so it can grow. That you have received a measure of that ability listen listen the ability of the spirit in a man is like currency let me explain to you something please look up please look up who has money somebody give me money one thousand five hundred thank you watch this if this is two hundred naira how many things can 200 naira buy 200 naira can buy a bottle of minerals is that true can it buy wine but is it money at least it can buy some things are you getting what i'm saying now let me explain to you something about god's ability god's ability in you can only solve problems that are within the range of the dimension of that ability anything higher than that measure watch this that measure cannot be solved although you have the ability listen 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 i want you to get this the ability of the spirit the anointing of the spirit at work in people is in levels and there are possibilities that are activated within that level and that measure are you getting what i'm saying when the measure of god's ability is at work in you every problem every giant every mountain that is within that range of power will be solved but everything higher than it will remain an obstacle get this revelation and you will see the reason why although you are anointed some things have not changed praise the lord are you getting what i'm saying now thank you just like this currency watch this this is 200 naira it can buy wine mama put you can eat something with this now yam and and akarankose watch this I can eat a karankose at Mama Put with this comfortably, with dignity. Can this take you to a five star hotel, the restaurant? But is this money? So, what do you need to do if you want to go to a five star hotel? Increase the same thing, not a different thing. Increase a measure of the very same thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Listen. That you have a measure does not mean the challenges in life respond to measures of the anointing, measures of graces. Don't let any man fool you that the moment you have an ability, it can solve every problem. It's not true. Those who talk those things have not worked in the anointing. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. This is what I work in every day. It's like a range. When you upgrade on the level of the anointing, that's why the Bible says he measured a thousand cubits. And it was to my feet but i got to a level where that would not be enough again then he had to measure a thousand cubits and the river increased and it was to my knees are we together now and then he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my lungs then he measured a thousand cubits and it was an overflowing river and he said everywhere that river went whatever was dead came alive There are different levels of the anointing the ability of the spirit so a mountain can jump and leave and you go to another mountain and you can be shouting everything you know and the mountain scares you there are sick bodies that we may struggle around with in many crusades in nigeria and those sick bodies can be there let benihin step in just two songs of worship i guarantee you not he has not even if he's talking about relationship 
it doesn't matter he can even teach on how to be a nice housewife and while he is teaching see the anointing does not cheer what is happening it whenever he sees a need and a demand for it it flows there immediately are you getting what i'm saying now so god's ability in you responding to a situation you can have a challenging issue that looks like a mountain and someone comes with the ability of god and brings a dimension of wisdom you never thought of and dissolves that thing in one minute and it's over case closed the ability of the spirit that was what happened to daniel they were about to slaughter them and kill them and he said ah, ah why is the king hasty in this all these people have tried their ability he said please just give us time and the bible says in the night the secret was revealed to daniel and he got up in the morning and answered the king same thing happened to joseph see how men took their generations by the ability of the spirit joseph did not become a prime minister because of interpretation of dreams joseph became a prime minister because he offered a very serious supernatural solution to the problem if you had interpreted dreams they would have said okay we have had you please um water go and lock him up and he would have just gone back highest they would have given him a day off and he's back to the prison but he was smart enough in addition to the dream he said i know this is the answer this is what we should do and when he said that look at him i love joseph he said oh king find a man he knew there was no man find a man check around don't trivialize my grace find a man if you can find another man with it no problem and the king said is he not here we kept quarreling asking people to come and interpret the dreams where can we find such a man that's why we worship the lord fully because there is nobody like him are you getting what i'm saying that's the reason why we worship him we love him searched all over couldn't find nobody i looked high and low still couldn't find nobody nobody prayed Nobody better know. Nobody better than you. There is something the Spirit of God will do to you that this song will become for you. No, not just for God. I want you to always be conscious of that. God can give you a territory. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to listen to me. God can put something upon your life that will make... Let me not go ahead of myself. That you come to a point where there is something in you without any show of pride you know it's not cheap and you know it's not what you find by the roadside listen when you explore the ability of god in you from border to border you will enter your sabbath experientially i guarantee you the bible says now there remaineth a rest for the people of god hebrews chapter 4 right and it says let us therefore labor the word labor there is content even as unto death to enter that rest for he that has entered that rest has ceased from his works there are two ways the ability of god in you can grow number one is by revelation 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 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge. Grace and peace be multiplied through knowledge. Through knowledge. The word knowledge there is the word translated epignosis. A comprehension of truth that makes the person who is knowing it and what is known become one. Not just awareness. It's actually the word that is interpreted intercourse. So grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge hallelujah hmm. revelation when light comes to you then you will arise the bible says they that sat in darkness they have seen a great light great light arise and shine isaiah 60 
it says for your light is come not your light is around the light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you it says it's one revelation God gave me watch this please if you are if you are a minister of the gospel here let me share with you a secret please look up money does not make a great ministry are you hearing what I'm saying you don't let any man fool you money does not make a great ministry it is impact that makes a great ministry and supplies finances finance in ministry is a product of impact are you getting what I'm saying now impact and this is how it happens when your light starts shining Gentiles will come unbelievers drug addicts all kinds of people will come kings will never come to your light when you become consistent and you keep growing it will start attracting see, brightness and excellence is a language there are those who know how to speak it the moment you start speaking their language they will come he says Gentiles shall come to your light there is a level of ministry where all you see are Gentiles people who are coming to be saved those coming to be sick somebody dragging his trolley of problems and coming to dump it and then you have to work on it but the time will come as your light begins to become bright like the day kings will start coming kings don't come to your light they come to the brightness the brightness of your rising and when they come like Queen Sheba they will not come empty handed they will come with their bounties they will come with their blessings the wise men from the east, when they saw Jesus Christ, they came with gold. They came with frankincense. They came with man. They came to honor him. Every time there is brightness, it begins to draw certain kinds of people. So, there are many men of God who are trying to look for money. They are trying to look for money because they think money makes an impactful ministry. What an error. It doesn't work that way. Money is only a reward. Money is a receipt for doing something. Right? We've learned it here. When you get money as a man of God, it's a receipt. Just like you buy something. The receipt means you are paid for it, not you will pay for it. The receipt is an evidence that something has been done, not is being done, not will be done. But the problem is we trivialize the ability of the Spirit in us. How many of us have looked like Gideon and felt that there is nothing within us. Oh, there is that great man of God there. There is that great woman of God there. And we forget. Mary was there standing and an angel appears to her and says, Blessed are you women among this and that and that. And then he told her that she was going to carry a child. And she said, How shall these things be? In other words, naturally this should not happen. Seeing that I know not a man. And the angel said something which is key for us this night it says the power of the highest that's how it happens the power of the highest shall overshadow you how can I be the last born in my family and yet I'm the one God will use to wipe the tears of people it says the power of the highest there is an ability of the spirit that can come upon you The second key to growing in the anointing and in God's ability is impartation. 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 Impartation is a transference of spiritual virtues. Transference of spirit. Transference of possibilities. A man who is a possessor of a dimension of possibility can share it. Like you use a candle to light another. It is a possibility in the spirit. That's the character of the dimension of God's ability called dunamis. It's an ability that is capable of being reproduced. Listen. I've said it again and again. A true leader does not maintain followers. A true leader reproduces himself and turns followers into leaders. If Joshua Selman remains a superstar and an anointed man. Everybody keeps clapping. I have failed. From the world's perspective and from the perspective of mediocres, we keep clapping. But let me tell you something. 
God's dimension of measure or His index of measuring success is not just by the crowd we have inside and outside. It is the individuals becoming a replica of His grace and anointing and His ability. God measures success one by one. He doesn't measure success by a crowd. Thank God for all of that. It's an evidence of the hand of God. But if we are to sample 10 people at random, and engage you with spiritual challenges and see how you are able to navigate through the dynamics of the operation of the spirit it is the true measure of the success of this ministry the ability to be empowered and carry that conviction and go and begin to produce results around your sphere of influence and I insist that it must happen to you in the name of Jesus Christ so impartation and revelation write this down very quickly the channels for releasing the ability of God the ability of God must be released please burn this into your mind I'm being very simple tonight because I want us to have this basic understanding before we pray the anointing the ability of the spirit must be released for people to be blessed by it it must be released it's not just the obtaining of the ability of God, but the dispensing, the release of it. That's what brings blessings to people. God's ability, God's ability is working in me, is working in me. God's ability, God's ability is working in me, it's working in me, it's God's ability, God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. Sing it with me. God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. And so when a mountain stands before you and you carry this ability, you will move with audacity. Humanly speaking, you should chicken out. Come on. But I love David. David stands with a sling, conscious of an ability that is bigger than him. And Goliath said, Am I a dog? I know I will kill you, but at least respect me. Come with knife. As if you are fighting a man. And David said, I will not, I will disgrace you. Let me even tell you how I will kill you. This is what will happen. This sling will shoot you and I will remove your head. It's God's ability. When you see men do supernatural things, brothers and sisters, I want you to know it's God's ability. What you see happening tonight is God's ability. The energy, the very strength of God, manifested as wisdom, manifested as power, manifested as faith, manifested the, the ability of God is what we call grace. Whether grace to become or grace to do is all called grace and it's God's ability. That's what makes men champions. That's what makes men wonderful people. It's the ability of God. The ability of God is like a programming. It's like a software. When it enters you, you are infected. There's nothing you can do about it. The moment you carry it, your environment begins to respond. That's the treasure that we have in heaven vessels. It's not about the vessel, but the treasure. And God designed it. The only way you benefit from the treasure is to carry the vessel along. That's the reason why when a man is anointed, you don't bring out the anointing and keep him. You carry the man too. As you honor the anointing, you honor him. When you bless the anointing, anointing cannot eat. It's the vessel that eats it as his benefit for paying attention. It's working in me. Look at the Bible. Full of people who took advantage of this divine ability. If you get this one thing I'm teaching you, you will change your life in a remarkable way. 
Hallelujah. Play this mic. Aaron sent me a text before I came here, Pastor. And um, he sent me a text and said, Man of God, I want you to explain to me what exactly happened in Port Harcourt. And then I looked and he said I was going to talk with him. I shared my Port Harcourt story. I shared it here, right? Pastor, he came from Port Harcourt. It's a land of greatness and a land of plenty. Listen, I was going to Port Harcourt and all I had, watch this, although God has corrected me recently because I've been running my mouth saying things, I've grown now. God has corrected me recently. In one of my retreats, I've been corrected. So I will I update my curriculum. Because I keep saying all I had was my bag. That bag was a seed. I know the kind of faith that brought that bag. That bag was a seed. I remember dragging that bag and the ministry was about this size then. Everybody. And they were all escorting me. I think they were going for a funeral. And that was how we went to the park. That park in um, that park on your way to Kaduna. Just this one. Yes. That Kwangila park. And they dropped me there and I was laughing. They were pity because they knew aside from my bus fare, all I had left, home and abroad, in terms of monetary value, was 800 naira. And I was going to a land I had never gone to. But I did not, like the woman in Second Kings chapter 4, I forgot that I had an ability. I kept looking at my rickety bag and all of this. Listen, I dropped at number 23, Quere Street around to 2 in the afternoon when I dropped there I knew I was stupid for sure because no right thinking human being would do what I had done and I stopped there 800 naira and I knew it would be foolish for me to try to look for a hotel to stay so the closest thing was at least to finish up the 800 naira and eat something with it so I went to one my mother was sharing something and watch this one thing I knew was that I was going to reign in that land. I didn't know how to describe it, but I knew there was an ability. Sometimes you need to come to the end of your road to now find out what you have been calling spare part, whereas that is all you need. Second Kings chapter 4, the woman lost everything, the husband used the children as collateral. When everything had gone, the prophet said, what do you have in your house? He said, nothing except and he said, you call it except? The vessel is only, the oil is small because of the vessel that took it, not because it is small. When you expand capacity, the oil will increase with it. He said, the oil is much. It's only because the oil was housed in a small vessel. Borrow vessel. Enlarge your capacity. And when that woman did that, she became rich with it. So I went there. I'll never forget when I was eating, the Holy Spirit just sent a signal to my spirit and I found out one of my friends that used to live there. And I called him. And I told him, I'm here, this and that and that. Can I come and stay for a while? And then I came, I went to the house and I stayed there. Listen, my money had finished. Let me tell you what happened. I was broke. There was, I mean, things were bad. Then his sister was sick. When his sister was sick, I wasn't happy that she was sick. Don't misunderstand me. But at least I was comforted that something... Listen. Undertakers are not happy that people die. But at least it is the making. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And so when she said she was sick, I prayed for her. When she was healed, she came with a seed of 1,000 naira. Listen. That 1,000 naira was what I used to buy my suit to do my first ministration. The suit was not what you sell around. The suit was this kind. You see this kind that they move around with it. You just call the man. Listen. Let me tell you a secret. It's better than many things they hang around. Nobody will know. It's only you that will know. Ah. Oh yes. Are we together now? I remember my friend in Abuja calling one pastor in Port Harcourt and say, a mighty man of God is in town and he said all kinds of things about me and the man said, and then it happened to be that the man was from my state. Watch this. 
no, 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 play that thing. I'm going to sing this song a lot. This song we started. That's our special number for this night. That's God's ability song. Listen. God is my witness. When I took a bike to go and see the pastor, he hosted us and another person we ate in his house. And then he went to go and introduce me to the church. As soon as I stepped into the building, my eyes were open. And I gave the pastor three prophecies. Three prophecies in the church. Are you with me? Three days after the prophecy, the first one happened. 0.5 million came into the church. The overseer said, call that man. He's coming to preach on Sunday. Ah! There is an ability. It can open doors. When all else fail, Makatalabada. Yes, many things in life can fail. Don't trust them. The real capital in your life is the anointing. That one is fail proof. Certificate can fail. Internet can fail. Brother, when all else fails, reach out deep down. God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. Listen. I went to the church. I bought the suit with the money. I can't remember how much. Dress looks smart. You will never know. Because I, I refused to. I knew that my present was a thing I just had to manage it. In my mind, I was light years ahead of my present. So I wasn't embarrassed by it. Because I knew my physical reality will necessarily necessarily become my mindset and my perspective when I went there on that Sunday morning it was the Sunday morning I was on my way to come and they sent me the message to preach they said I should preach about vow I said I fasted for three days for this opportunity and you are now sending me the message God had already given me a word listen the man with the church was a prophet he doesn't come out until after the service when you finish preaching he will now come out and do his thing when I stepped in and I looked at the people, I had never seen a congregation of people who were that demonized. And um, there was, you know, we are used to, we write our songs in Zaria. Right? So it's very difficult to sing these songs outside because we write our songs. We receive them, we compose them. And I didn't know the kind of song to raise because uh, I wasn't used to all those songs. Our songs, you can be humming for 30 minutes. You don't do that there. There was one song that I remember. Now is the time for the new anointing. Gird up your loins and be ready. Every yoke of bondage surely must be broken. That was the song I heard. My goodness. That meeting, that meeting was something else. It was, it, was, it was an amazing meeting. You can imagine the things that God did. After that meeting, I had honorarium. I ate in the house of the pastor. They took me to another place. You know how they are. They are not like the not here that ignore your grace till you die. Right there, once they see grace, they celebrate it immediately. It's not in the north that they will just look and say, can you help me? No. They know how to... Am I lying, pastor? Come on now. They celebrate grace very generously. And so we went there. And from that meeting, they said two weeks after the church was going to have a convention and I was going to be their major speaker. Listen, from that time, it was one meeting, after one meeting, after one encounter, after one encounter, after one encounter, after one encounter. And within six months, my life had changed change in a way I didn't even know where I was coming from again. It had so changed the road had deleted behind me never to return there again. That's why I never forget his ability when all else fail today I've stood before kings I've stood before politicians none of my certificates have brought me before these people but an ability of the spirit are you getting what I'm saying? So don't ignore it. Especially for some of you who are in school. Read your book, but don't fool yourself. The world we live in needs an ability of the Spirit. Needs an ability of the Spirit. Let's finish up. Hmm. 
the primary channel for releasing God's ability is your words. 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 Where the word of a king is, there is power. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me. The spirit entered me when he spake unto me. The spirit entered me when he spake unto me. An impartation, a dispensing of that anointing. He said, and it set me upon my feet. Listen, there are people sitting now hearing me. You will stand up from this meeting. And it's like something will suddenly rise within you. And you will say, I know I may not be any other thing, but I'm anointed. I may not be any other thing. Kabbalakata. I was teaching the school of ministry students. And I taught them, no matter what society says you are not, they may be right, but they are wrong when they say you are not anointed. They may be right. They may say you are not fine. It may be true. They may say you are from a background where the map of your village was not added. When they were, you don't even use GPS to find if they are right. But if they ignore the anointing, they are wrong. The anointing will make nations follow you on their knees. And it will be a privilege for them to receive of your grace. You will be standing surprised while they are saying thank you. God's ability is released through words. Number two, your hands. Listen, please look up. I know that many of us have ignored our hands. I want everybody to look at your hands if you can. These hands. It's working in you. God's ability. God's ability. It's working in you. He's working in you. Listen. These hands you see, brothers and sisters, a hand is a mystery in the realm of the spirit. A hand is not what holds people. That's why the Bible talks about the right hand of God. It talks about the hand of God. The hands are also doors in the spirit. They are channels for releasing the anointing. The work of a man is done through his hands. When you realize that there is an ability on your hands, it will bring upon your life creativity. It will bring upon your life innovation. You will do things through your hands you never believe possible. These hands, these hands can open the gates of nations to you. These hands can bring kingdoms to their knees. These hands can swing the two lead gates of your destiny open. God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me Brothers and sisters you are getting blessed right now because I am speaking you are not hearing English some of you, you don't even know what is happening to you as you are listening to me. You don't know whether you should sit down, whether you should stand up because there is an ability. My mouth is a window. It's a window revealing the realm of the spirit. It's a window communicating the secret place. Something is happening to your spirit as you are receiving. This is not a lecture. This is not a lecture. Shabala, tabala, tabala. It's an ability. The power of the Holy Ghost. Working in you, <laughs> he's working in you. His God's ability, God's ability, he's working in you. He's working in you. And so, as you speak, the opening of your mouth is like the opening of the portals in the spirit. And you begin to speak as you communicate those realities. You are changing people. They don't even know what is happening to them. They just know that there is an activity. It's not English. It's not oratory. It's called utterance. 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 It's by the ability of the spirit. It's not a lecture. You are changing men. You are using words to bring them into an experience. 
They cannot explain the ability of God walking in a man. And so the spirit enters. The words come with fire. The words come with illumination. They do something to your spirit, man. It's like life. Some of you sometimes you don't even know what you are receiving. You can't tell what is happening to you. It's like hammer. It's like fire. You can't tell. It's an ability. It comes help that benefit. It comes from heaven. An ability of the spirit. What ability? The sensitivity. I sense the anointing of the Holy Spirit is already moving. Brother. It's working in me. That's what I want you to become. So anointed. So full of his ability. The Bible says even God who quickened the dead and uses his mouth to call things. He uses his mouth to make things happen that would not have happened. The prophet said by this time he was not revealing, he was creating. It wouldn't have happened. His words created it. It's working in me. Listen. Many of us have been speaking. It's time for us to be communicators of light and power. It's time for us to be communicators of divine reality. I see the angels of the Lord pouring what looks like oil on people. This is what I see. It's like an anointing coming on people. Strong anointing of the Holy Ghost. God shall be it's an ability. It's an ability of the Holy Ghost. That the opening of your mouth is a gate in the spirit. What in me? What in me? That's a beauty. It's a The ability of the spirit, listen, is released on the strength of conviction. Your persuasion about who God is 
and what he has put in you sponsors your audacity to take action. Action based on that consciousness is called faith. We've taught a lot of dogma about faith. Faith is nothing based on just human assets. Faith is the name given to the action you take based on your persuasion of who God is. And then the Bible says, and the Lord walking with them. Confirming the word. Listen. The anointing of the Spirit is the principal capital in your life. Please hear me. Action that is based on your conviction. Ask action that is based on expectation by the ability of the spirit so your hands you expect that people will receive impartation this is how it works brothers and sisters there is an ability in you there is an ability in you you must know this there is an ability in you it's, it's not it's not about some gimmicks please this is not even about falling down it's called the mystery of godliness where God can dwell in a man so your body is like a puppet they are seeing you but there is another agency at work it's called the ability of God that's what will make you a wonder men will keep looking when they think they have exhausted you then you come from another dimension because you are connected to a supply that is eternal not bounded with time no fatigue is not bounded to the limitations of this system it's the ability of God the ability of God reproduce again and again and again and again it's not about trial and error you can gain mastery in the dispensing of his ability yes yes strongly belongs to those who are of full age who by reason of use they have gained mastery it's like fighting God's ability is God's ability is working in me that's why we can tell you to come for this reason and we can guarantee that you will be blessed yes we can guarantee not on the strength of the flesh there is an ability no man's hardness can stand it no matter how stubborn you are it doesn't make any difference because when he shows up the bible says the voice of god upon the waters is mighty Listen, this is what happens in the teachings. There are many people here who have come from other places and they cannot explain what happens to them when they listen to these teachings. It's not so much about the revelation. There is an ability in it that compels compliance. It's called anakazo. It's a Greek word. It's the compelling power of the Spirit. It is with that ability that we can prophesy over your life and your job and it will change. Listen, it's not just saying change, change, receive. And all those things are cabbages. What is the ability that sponsors it? For I am a man under authority, he says. And on the strength of that authority, I tell one, go, and he will go. I tell one, come, and he will come. How can cancer die? God's ability. How can a jobless person get a job before Monday? God's ability. How can a, a, a life, I mean, come on, think about these people. It's the ability of the Spirit. It's not by might. It's not by power. There is an ability bigger than your effort, bigger than your strength. Help them please. There are three rewards when you can press to manifest the ability of God. There are three rewards. Reward number one is to become a desirable personality. 
nations will desire you because you carry that which is needed. They may criticize you, but they will desire you. There is too much darkness in this world for the carriers of the anointing to be ignored. It has nothing to do with ministry. That's the key to being an ambassador. The nations will look for you when you carry this capital called the anointing. It will open gates. You will become Bula. You will become Hezibah. The delightful land. You will become greatly desired when you carry this anointing. Listen. I have met men and women that no level of qualification in life would have given me access to them at this level. And I am amazed. I am amazed. I travel all the time. And I am humbled love me from region to region it's not just that they love Joshua Thelman, many of them don't even know me, there is something when you carry it you become a joy of nations when you carry that anointing you become desirable the anointing will make up for your weaknesses it will make up big time listen listen years ago there was somebody who wanted to go to NDA and there is a height, there is a level to which if you are not as tall as that height, they will not take you. And the person who wanted to go there was lower than that height. And when he went, they dismissed him. And he went and met the Emir of Zaria. And the Emir of Zaria sent him with delegates that they should go and tell the commandants and the people that the Emir has added his height. Did you hear what I said? That the Emir has added his height and they took him that's what the anointing does where you cannot enter others are entering because they are intelligent others are entering because they have connections when they come they ask you what do you have and then you say God's ability God's ability is working in me is working Listen, they may, they can't ignore you for too long. It won't be too long, somebody will be confused. You will be needed immediately. It won't be too long, somebody will be sick. Demons are still on earth with guarantees that you remain valuable. Listen, listen, for as long as there is a demand for your anointing, you remain valuable. Business tells us until you have something you are necessary. Masala Baba, the anointing keeps you valuable forever. Stocks can rise and fall. Oil can rise and fall, but the anointing has equal value in every territory. Listen, when you carry Naira, when you carry Naira, as soon as you get to London with Naira, Naira is no longer valuable. Is that true? You have to change it to another currency. When you travel to Israel, you have to change the pounds or euro to sickles to be able to use it. When you travel to Asia, you now have to change it to yen and the rest to use it. But the anointing, the way it works in Nigeria, when you get to UK, there is no translation, there is no downgrading. Same sickness, same demons, same challenges. Listen. Rich men fall sick. Rich men get confused. Politicians get confused. Have you seen certain businesses that are only for certain people? You only sell pampas for children. Abi and an adult who is sick, an old man. A young man doesn't need pampas. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? You you only bob somebody like me who always wants his hair low. If you want to shine it, let it shine. This is the way you do it. But somebody who keeps his hair doesn't need it. There are certain things in life that are only for a group of people. The anointing is a master capital. It is relevant anywhere, everywhere, and at all times. You need it in business. You need it in your academics. You need it in marriage. For me students, you need it in your Potuemi. No, 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 no. It's not just by the Y, the X. There is an ability. Let me tell you early enough. There is an ability of the Spirit. Because you can write an exam well. And somebody can be marking your exam. And your script will fall down. There is an anointing that guarantees it remains there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number one, it brings you... It makes you greatly desired. Number two, the ability of God gives you favor with men. Ah, please listen to my message, Activating Seasons of Greatness. Favor with men. And it does that in three dimensions. It gives you access to people, access to resources, and access to opportunities. These are the three things any man needs to succeed. Access to people. Access to resources, access to opportunities. The anointing brings access. Not everything is solved by money. Access is greater than money. Access. 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 Hallelujah. It's God's ability. Listen. We were in Benin. We were in Benin recently for a meeting. I say these things to encourage you. After the meeting, some people came in from Asaba and they shared a very touching testimony. And um, the pastors came in, great ministry, doing great things for God here. When they came in, they said this that they believed it to be an angel, but they said somebody at a point where the ministry really needed the hand of God. Somebody just entered with one of our teachings and gave them and left. Never to see him again. Never knew him. He was just somebody who came and dropped it and left. And the pastor said when they listened to it, they got all the information and after the time they were talking to me, they said they had over 200 of the messages and it has revolutionized the people. There are people today who know me and love this ministry, I have never seen them. In fact, 75% of those who get blessed by this ministry who have never set our eyes. Some of them is just one message. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. If you think it's ordinary, try it. Just go online and put anything. I don't care what, just put anything and invite people. There is an angel. There is an angel of the Lord's presence that signifies the word of God and sends it like an envoy. Hallelujah. During my, during my birthday, I think we had compliments from over 16 nations. 16 nations of the world that have been blessed by the ministry. I've not gone to most of them. See that? But then it's coming. There are people who take these messages by themselves and keep spreading. That's their ministry. That is like a covenant they signed with God. Brothers and sisters, tonight I want you to give up on your strength outside of God. I'm reducing your journey towards destiny. You will waste your time for nothing. And find out after 70 years that this is not how it works. But when the ability of God is upon you, it will make you a sign and a wonder. You will have unusual access. Access to things you will not pay for. The anointing will pay for things for you. Unusual access. Hallelujah. And finally, The third reward for the ability of the Spirit working in you is ever increasing honor. Honor. Let me tell you what honor is. Listen. Honor is not just recognition. Honor is the discernment of your uniqueness and the ability to reward it. 
if you are not rewarded for your uniqueness it's not honor you can be recognized but when a man recognizes you and is willing to invest in you that is honor to honor is to esteem you with respect and dignity and that you'll be rewarded for your blessings almost every day of my life there are people blessing me sowing seeds doing all kinds of things i sat down this morning and i was talking to the lord i said lord what are you doing to me this is more than i have bargained for as soon as we arrived this evening i just came in and when i came out i was almost sometimes you see me come and sit down and i just put my head down i'm fighting tears many times because I remain humble at the hand of God. The kind of workers that God has given in this ministry, I think they are even, it looks like they believe in the ministry more than me. Tomorrow is our leaders' retreat, and Sunday is the workers' retreat. Committed people with their life like madmen. You try to coordinate people like that, and you see how easy it is. Of course they are trained. Of course there are principles. But the force of cohesion is the ability of the spirit. There is an anointing. Tonight, listen. I want everybody hearing the sound of my voice inside and outside. You are going to make up your mind tonight. And say, Lord, I am tired of this inferiority and complex. It may not have been your fault to have come from the background you came from. But it can change. I love my father. He's a great man. And I see most of the things that happen in my life with him as ignorance. But there was a time my father spoke to me and said, I was going to become a failure in this life. And his prayer is that I fail alone and not bring other people. About four years ago, my father got down on his knees and asked me to pray for him. The anointing of the Spirit will make you a desire of nations. See, forget about the meager criticisms you will receive. It's nothing compared to the honor. It's one is to one million. It is totally negligible. Believe me. This is what I know. This is what my hands have handled. And I came with this word tonight. The anointing of the Spirit is an equalizer. It can cover for everything that went wrong. So you no longer have an excuse. No matter what else fails, when you are anointed, you still remain valuable. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is. Hear me! The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. We are going to pray. And tonight I want us to pray because many of us are going to receive, there will be a lot of impartations in this place tonight. Especially for some of us who just came newly. Don't just come naively. Open up your heart. Let something fall on your life and change you forever. I have found my servant. Please give us Psalm 89. Verse 20. Psalm 89 verse 20. 89 verse 20. Help us media. It's ability. That's why my secret place. Listen. My secret place remains my greatest asset. Not ministrations. The man of God, Apostle Johnson Suleiman, said something that blessed me one time. Listen. He said he was in a secret place praying and building and planning and something happened. A big man, supposedly a politician, big man, he came and spoke to him and said he wanted to see him. And uh, he was with God. One hour he didn't come out. Two hours he didn't come out. Three hours he didn't come out and the wife was already getting embarrassed that how can you leave a big man like this? And they went to knock and one of his daughters went to knock 
and then he opened the door and she was saying daddy why attend to this man let him go and he looked at her compassionately and he said my daughter sit down he said do you know why this man is here he's here because of what i am doing he's not here because he likes me he's here because there is an anointing he needs he needs direction he needs a prophetic word if i stop doing what i'm doing he will not come back again let him wait that's why my secret place is the greatest song. You don't find me gallivanting around. I'm like a herbalist. You don't see me strolling around and then buying orange, peeling it and just moving around. No, because you are gathered here tonight because you love God. It is true. But you have come to hear a man who you consider to be anointed. And the only reason why you will keep coming and listening and the only reason why nations will keep coming is because of this ability. The miracle service is by the corner. There are sick people, HIV, cancer, all kinds of oppressed people. In this place right now, there are families that have traveled kilometers to come. And they are trusting God for a touch. And so, the greatest publicity of a believer, men of God, get this, the secret place. That's the place you receive strength. That's the place you receive innovation. That is where you receive this. He says, I have found David my servant. And with my holy oil, I smeared him with oil that activated an ability. Let's look at the next three verses. 21. With whom my hand shall be established, my arm shall also strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. 24 But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted. He said thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Listen. My prayer is that the least among us here will be as great as David. But you know, if you take it from the standpoint of intelligence, there are people who are a thousand times more intelligent than you. Your advantage in the kingdom is the backing of the spirit. Please listen. If you keep me side by side with brilliant people, I may not have too much to say. If you keep me side by side with intellectuals, I may have something to say, but maybe not much. If you keep me around older people, they have experience, I may only have little to say. If you keep me around people, the world is full of cynical people. Even if I want to bless them, they will not believe in me. Either because I'm not their tribe or because of certain parameters. So my bailout is the anointing. I got the anointing upon my life jealously. I can lose everything but not his presence. And the anointing that it brings. He says, But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn. Listen, God can exalt the horn of a man. God spoke to us that this is the season of the rain. And the rain is already falling. I tell you, people's stories are changing. God is taking people to newer levels of wealth. Newer levels of the anointing. Newer levels of the spirit. Inside and outside. Some of you are standing. There are no seats standing by the fence. Listen. You are face to face with destiny. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit. If you've never believed in the ability of God in you, I want you to believe it. Ephesians 3.20 And then we'll pray. Ephesians chapter 3, please, verse 20. Help us, media. Verse 20. 20. 3.20 Everyone read it together. Now unto He, who is the He, the Almighty God, who is able to do, say God is able to do, 
in me whatever he desires God is able to do in me God is able to do in me years ago when I saw these meetings I, 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 I would say I didn't believe them but it was difficult to explain it see let me tell you something there are times a vision can be so great there's no point trying to share it because nobody can understand but only be consistent when you begin to birth wonders then the world will know he's a mighty God and I want you to believe him he can change anyone's story God can make you the song of many like David the song upon the mouth of women and children young and old You reign, you reign, Saint Zion King, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on the earth above. All things, all fountains of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on the earth above. Listen, the Lord is giving me an instruction. There are at least 15 people that I see. A strong anointing is going to come upon them. Please let me have them outside there. Just those 15 people who are going to pray. But the Lord is ministering to me because He's activating something. It's a substance of the Spirit upon those 15 people. I'm about to pray right now. And the angels of the Lord will separate those people mightily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Lord, where are those 15 people? Right now, in the name of Jesus, let the fire of God throw them out right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, inside and outside. Kapata, Sekhe Sekheta, Em Kratos Kalawa. I send the word in the realm of the Spirit. Sekhe Barakaba, Reke Sekhe Sekhe, Sekhe Sekhe Lebos. Let there be that activation. Inside and outside, those portals. I open it in the name of Jesus. 
is working in me.
it is not by power. There is an ability. Listen. Hallelujah. Now listen. The issues in our lives, when the anointing of the Spirit finds expression, it can manifest as creativity. It can manifest as wisdom. Listen. It can manifest as counsel. It can manifest as understanding. I'd like you to pray and cry to God and say, Lord, every dimension that your anointing needs to convert into to solve the current dilemma in my life, if it is wisdom, may your power become unto me wisdom. If it is the power to challenge faith, if it is favor, let it become unto me. Lift your voice and pray. Levels of favor only the anointing can bring. There are levels of increase only the anointing can bring. There are levels of grace and glory only the anointing can bring. I like you to pray that every door of favor you need to enter, may the anointing bring you into it. Lift your voice and pray. The distance between you and a major breakthrough is one door of favor away. No man can stop you. I tell you, when the anointing is upon you, you are in sin, people. No power can stop you.
Hallelujah. My Nonya, listen to me. From today, I want you to walk in the consciousness that I'm anointed. It has nothing to do with a man of God. You need the anointing to birth ideas, financial ideas. You need that anointing for creativity. Your mind will not think independent of the anointing. You need that idea. You need that creativity. The anointing will bring direction to your life. It's God's ability. It's not your ability. It's God's ability. Hallelujah. Father, I pray in the name of your Son, Jesus. From today, let no one here be ordinary. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm praying over you from the depths of my heart. And I prophesy to you that the mountains that have stood before you and the next dimension in your work with God, may the anointing of God turn them into testimony. The believer is a possessor. The believer is a possessor. Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a performance. In the name that is above all, everything that has stopped the grace upon your life from finding expression, Everything that has come the grace of God upon your life from being recognized by those who you are sent to, I tear off that faith to not in the name of Jesus. Everything that has blocked the flow of grace from the realm of the Spirit to you, it leaves heaven but it doesn't just to you. Every pathway in the Spirit, by whatever mystery that has been blocked, I open it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spiritual inaccuracy in the name of Jesus, every missing the mark spiritually, every disalignment, everything that makes you get it was not complete. You receive things from heaven, but you don't get the full details. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I supply power to your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, some of you have dreams, but you have an incomplete dream. Just when the information you need in the dream is about to come, then you wake up. You know it was of God. It was holding the key to clarity for something covered it. Right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. May there be spiritual accuracy. I speak in spiritual accuracy. I prophesy spiritual accuracy. Everything that has made you timid and fearful and made you think you are nobody and that the anointing cannot find expression in your life. Tonight I cross that spirit. By the God of heaven I cross fear. I cross intimidation. I cross timidity. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I prophesy to you in this season, arise. Arise and shine. It's your season of the rain. Every dryness in your life, it is swallowed up by the rain. The Bible says unto the Spirit will pour upon us from on high. Isaiah 32, 15. Until the Spirit will pour upon us from on high. And then the real darkness will be counted for a fruitful vine. And the fruitful vine will be counted for a forest. Everything that has covered your glory. A man can walk with his glory covered. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
May the one who is the least power of men by the agency of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, may your glory begin to speak from today. I prophesy, may your glory begin to speak from today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now keep standing. There are people here inside and outside. You've never made a serious decision to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Some at one point or the other, you may have come to commit yourself. You've answered an altar call before. But for some reason, things happen around your life and you went in while. Tonight, God is giving you an opportunity. He's giving you a new beginning. Inside and outside, no matter how far you are, do not miss out. The activities of the Spirit are only for those who are part of the program of God. Those who have experienced the reality of the new birth, wherever you are, you want to say, Jesus, come into my heart. Or you are rededicating your life. You are saying, from today, I stop playing church. I mean business with Jesus. Inside and outside, especially for those of us who came from you and me. Paracentral, you've just been living your life the way you want. But right now, you are saying, I'm making my ways right. Wherever you are, leave your feet and come out here right now. Quickly. I'll just count one to ten. We're out of time. One, two, inside and outside. Three, we'll just count one to ten for time to very quickly. Four, don't let no devil stop you. He's giving you a new beginning. Five, six, please stay away from them. Seven, God bless you. Keep coming. Hallelujah. The power of God is here right where you are. In one minute, I'd like you to talk to the Lord. You're not reciting a point from the depth of your heart. Jesus, I have come for real. No playing games. Go ahead and pray. Those of you in front here. Jesus, I have come to you. Go ahead and pray. Jesus, I come to you. Jesus, I come to you. No playing games, no one leg in, one leg out. Jesus, I come to you. Those of us standing, stretch your hands towards them, don't just watch them. Pray for them from the depth of your heart. Pray as if you are praying for your son or your daughter or your mother or father. Make sure you are talking to the Lord. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to lead you to pray this prayer. That is a strong anointing for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Many of you as you are praying this prayer, you are not feeling the Holy Spirit. The power of God will just come upon you. There is such a strong anointing for baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now those of you in front say after the Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe you are the Son of God. I repent of my sins and I declare that I need you in my life. From today, I receive eternal life. Say it, I receive eternal life into my spirit. Forward ever, backward never. I break away from every wrong association and I receive grace 
to live a victorious life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let me pray for you. Father, I pray for these ones. I stretch my hands. May the power of God come upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm speaking to you. I lay my hands prophetically upon you and I declare in the name of Jesus that every weight, every encumbrance that keeps you down, the power of sin over your life is broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And a fresh supply of grace from today, such a hunger for God will come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. A hunger for prayer, a hunger for the study of the word, a hunger for fellowship in the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, thank you for making this glorious decision. This is the best decision in your life. Hold on. I want you to follow the gentleman. There are some people waving their hands. All of you just walk this way. They will lead you. They will have your details and speak to you. And uh, we'll follow you up. We'll send an SMS to you to follow up. Celebrate them for God bless you. Appreciate them, please. have been blessed by this message. For additional information, you can visit us at Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia NT Network International. Or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash Koinonia underscore